Shadow of the Earth Tree gets review bombed on Steam. Rocket League is officially a football game, and why Power World may soon blow up for a second time. I'm Ash Dixon, and this is Jinx News. Few things are sacred these days. Few things are guaranteed. Hagrid will always be a sex icon. Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island will always be a cinematic masterpiece. And the England football squad will always disappoint at international events. But in the world of gaming, few things are on that renowned list. At least, not for the right reasons anyway. So maybe I was silly to believe that Elden Ring, FromSoft's open world golden child, would forever be perceived as video game perfection. After all, all the reviews from gaming journalists created the impression that the latest expansion, Shadow of the Earth Tree, was yet another masterpiece. But then again, those are the same people that allowed Bethesda to create this poster, which is strange, right? Because it almost creates the impression that Starfield is in fact a good game. So who do I turn to when I'm too lazy to form my own opinions? The sophisticated insights that are Steam reviews. And what's that? Shadow of the Earth Tree is sitting at mixed reviews. And out of 30 something thousand reviews, a third of them are negative. Well, there we go everyone, it's confirmed. Shadow of the Earth Tree, bad game. And why would I play that trash when I have Banana, the game where you click on a banana? I mean, it's got a very positive overall score and the people clearly agree with me considering more people are playing Banana right now than Elden Ring. I was hoping the reviews for this game would be all like banana puns, like this game is so appealing. But no, this is Steam. It's just a whole load of people saying they want to shove a banana up their so why then are people upset at Shadow of the Earth Tree? Well, a decent chunk quote performance issues, low FPS, audio glitches, all very valid complaints for people who just want to enjoy their game. Another sizable chunk, however, are complaining that it's just too hard, which is hard to take seriously. That's like going to a chili eating contest and then complaining that the next day you can relate a bit too much to Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire. <laughs> Asmund Gold is one such person who argued just one day after release that the expansion was too hard to be fun, which I can't relate. Normally for me, the harder the better. One thing that isn't helping is that FromSoft have introduced a new progression system in the DLC. And while you still have your traditional experience from the base game, the difficulty is tuned far more around these new in-game items found around the expansion. And I can't help but feel a load of people got used to their OP builds in base Elden Ring, have realized that that strategy no longer works and are struggling with the realization that life is painful and hard and you've just got to suck it up. After all, with the dark, comes the light and victory is going to feel so so sweet when you sit upon a throne built upon your blood sweat and tears anyway one streamer called good game ethan just beat malakef while having to roll in real life whenever he had to roll in game if you've played elden ring you would know that involves a lot of rolling enough to make fred durst proud yeah, let's go so eat that steam reviewers What's your excuse? Either way, I'm throwing it out to you. Is Shadow of the Earth Tree too difficult? And if it is, is that necessarily a bad thing? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. Rocket League is officially football now. Disagree? Well, you can take it up with FIFA, the organization that's never made any controversial or questionable decisions ever. That's right, FIFA's Esports World Cup, which kicks off in August, is adding Psyonix's car football game to the event, acknowledging for the first time that Rocket League counts as football esports. And I think the move makes sense. Yeah, there will still be competitions for the now awkwardly named EA Sports FC 24, but that's always going to have limited viewership when you have, you know, actual football. Although that might change considering how VAR's going. Lukaku approves this message. Rocket League, however, doesn't have such a problem and in general is just a fantastic eSport. It has fast paced games, zoomy cars and players who pull off such crazy aerials that it makes me feel like a kid looking up at all at the Disney World fireworks display. FIFA announced the news via Twitter or X or Zitter or Only Clowns, whatever you want to call it these days, alongside this promo. 16 nations have been invited with confirmation coming soon about who those teams will be, although it sounds like they're going to be chosen based on the number of representatives they put in previous RLCS majors. There will be three players per team with one backup and it looks like the US, France, Brazil and Saudi teams are going to be pretty stacked. Each invited country will host their own qualifying tournaments and if you 
want to get involved, you can sign up too. You can go to FIFA's esports platform and choose Rocket League as your chosen game at FIFA. GG. And while you're in the signing up mood, please consider checking out our Patreon Jinx Plus. It's got a load of cool Jinx content on there, you can try it for free, and it just supports the show. You might even find some Rocket League content on there. Just scan the QR code below. Power World has been out for about five months now, and despite introducing new Mon, I mean Pals, every couple of weeks or so, no game could sustain the ungodly amount of hype that thing had at launch. But it might soon be seeing a second wind. You see, back in March, after Power became the biggest third-party Xbox Game Pass launch ever, Pocket Pet CEO Takaro Mizobe said they were in talks to bring the game to other platforms. And that time might be now, because Power community manager tweeted this out on Saturday. And you know what community managers be like? Post something cryptic that isn't actually that cryptic, and it's solved within a minute or two, and wham! Hello engagement. As you can see, the tweet starts with a black heart. A green heart and a white heart. Yeah! And then a cheeky little blue heart is added. A major Sakurajima update is coming on Thursday with a new island, dedicated Xbox servers and a whole lot more. Whether that will include the PS5 announcement remains to be seen, but check back in with us at the end of the week to find out. And the best way to do that, click that old subscribe button, hit that bell and why not like the video? while you're at it. We'll see you on Wednesday.